is scheduled for surgery and has known association of cardiac disease or presumed cardiac disease. If the surgery is emergency surgery, then we just stratify the risk and go ahead with surgery. Emergency surgery, we cannot help. But if it is elective, right, then what do we do? If patient has any symptoms of acute coronary syndrome, chest pain or dyspnea, right, if patient doesn't have any such symptom, if patient has, we evaluate and we go for goal-directed medical therapy. If patient does not have any such symptoms, then we estimate the risk of major adverse cardiovascular event based on the combined clinical and surgical risk. That is these revised cardiac risk indexes, etc. or online risk calculators. By that, we calculate the risk. Okay? If it is low risk, less than 1%, no further testing is required, we proceed with surgery. If elevated risk, if elevated risk, moderate or greater, right, with functional capacity more than 4 meths, right, or function, we, after seeing the risk is elevated more than 2%, we see the functional status of the patient, clinically functional status. If the functional status is excellent, more than 10 meths, no further testing. If the functional status is between 4 to 10 meths, Again, no further testing, we can proceed for surgery. But we will know that compared with excellent functional status, this is little higher risk group. Then functional status unknown or less than 4 meths. Now, these have poor functional status, that is less than 4 meths, more testing would be required. So, in this stress echocardiography, we can go ahead with, right, to help in our making our decision. So, with further testing, it will help in making our decision. So, if on further testing, nothing positive got, right, then we can proceed to surgery according to the goal-directed medical therapy or, or we can go for alternate st uh, strategies, less palliative strategies, patient with poor functional status, patient with poor functional status, patient with, let's say, uh, elevated risk, we can go for alternate management. We, instead of going for surgeries which are associated with higher risk. So, we can go for palliative treatment, okay. So, we can go for palliation. And if patient cannot undergo the stress echocardiography, normal stress echocardiography, then pharmacological stress testing can also be done. And if pharmacological stress testing is abnormal, then medical goal related uh, therapy like uh, angioplasty, etc. can be done prior to surgery and then taken the patient for surgery. So, interval first we have to uh, improve the patient's function status and then we have to take the patient for surgery, right? So, this is how we decide. This is how we decide, okay? So, examiner can ask, who are very high risk patient? Very high risk. The patient who are with a very elevated risk, very high risk. So, what patient comes under very high risk? Patient, we have already discussed, with recent MI, unstable angina, decompensated heart failure, high-grade arrhythmias, or hemodynamically important valvular heart disease like aortic stenosis are particularly at a very high risk for perioperative cardiovascular complications. So, we need to identify these patients. What should be done in them, these high-risk patients? These should be optimally treated uh, with a possible referral to cardiologist and further evaluation for further evaluation and management. If patient is already under cardiologist, then we need to discuss it with the cardiologist for the right and optimum time for the patient, for the um, optimization and for the right time for the patient to be taken for surgery. So, if it is a non-elective surgery, these high-risk patient cannot be immediately taken. They are associated with high perioperative cardiovascular risk. Now, what are the patients who are high risk. We talked about very high risk. Now, let us talk about just high risk. Patient with known or suspected heart disease like cardiovascular disease, significant valvular heart disease and symptomatic arrhythmias. Okay. These are, let us say, high risk patient. So, what is the approach? We have to see the functional status and further cardiac evaluation. And only if the result we will do any further cardiac evaluation only if the result will change our management, right? So, in these patients, in high-risk patients, functional status and further cardiac evaluation 
should be done then only we will decide whether to go ahead with the surgery or not then low risk patient simply can be taken for the surgery without any further testing okay so next question which can be asked what further tests so what further cardiac evaluation so we already talked about stress testing stress echocardiography now what is the indication of stress echocardiography the american college of cardiology and american heart association guidelines on perioperative cardiovascular evaluation stress testing may be considered for surgical patient with elevated risk of major adverse cardiac events and poor functional status if further testing will impact the decision making or perioperative care so that can only be done if the further testing can impact our decision making and patient care otherwise it should not be done if the surgery is emergent surgery and we will not have time for any intervention if the result is positive of these tests then no use of getting the test done we will have to go ahead with the surgery but if the surgery is a semi urgent surgery we have time we can get these tests done and we can manage the patient and then take the patient for surgery okay pre operative coronary computed angi uh, tomography angiography that is the non invasive your uh, coronary angiography now what is its role not clear not clear it is not very clear in what group of patient it has to, it has to be done but in patient with suspected myocardial infarction this tests can be this test can be done though this has a very high positive uh, let's say high sensitivity on number of times this high sensitivity makes very difficult in our makes it very difficult to take proper decision so it's very not clear what is the role then cpet coronary pulmonary exercise testing again it is unclear mostly it is done before routinely it is done before renal and liver transplant so before transplants transplant patient resting echocardiography again not much role not much role okay only if valvular region is associated we need to see what is the level of association and what is the level of valvular heart disease the patient ha is having okay then the next question how will you write the pre operative orders regarding present ongoing medication so my pa patient had under, had was on four medications so what order we will write stop clopidogrel 5 days prior to surgery continue aspirin beta blocker amlodipine and statin so we need to continue all these drugs and we only have to stop clopidogrel 5 days prior to surgery examiner can ask what is the current recommendation of asa for patient with low bleeding risk so if a patient is going to get operated for a surgery with a very low bleeding risk right what is the current recommendation for asa the current recommendation is that if a patient is on dual platelet therapy that is clopidogrel and aspirin dual platelet therapy we can continue it so dual antiplatelet therapy not reach the minimum required duration we need to continue it now there is a minimum required duration after stenting etc where this dual antiplatelet therapy is continued if patient is undergoing low risk surgery the dual antiplatelet therapy can be continued it i mean we can we can continue clopidogrel as well in patient with who is undergoing low risk surgery this is the current recommendation of asc non emergency surgery with risk of bleeding non emergency surgery with risk of bleeding what is the recommendation so in non emergency surgery right for at least 6 month right deferring non emergency not time sense that emergency surgery for at least 6 month as opposed to shorter time period this is the recommendation applies to both drug eluting and brain bare metal stents so if patient is on drug eluting or bare metal stent postpone the surgery for 6 month right before taking the patient for surgery if the surgery is associated with risk of bleeding because if the surgery is associated with risk of bleeding we'll have to stop the clopidogrel and if 6 month is not a gap the risk of stent thrombosis would be high so if it is a non emergency surgery which can wait we need to wait for 6 months and then only we can stop clopidogrel and take the patient for surgery what is the recommendation for major non emergency time sensitive surgery prior to 6 months so now patient is for some surgery but surgery needs to be done quickly i mean it's non emergency but needs to be done as soon as possible and still the 6 month framework has not 
past. In that case, at least one month gap should be there, preferably six months after the bare metal or your drug eluting stent. So, at least six months, preferably three months. If it's a pure emergency surgery, you cannot do anything. Immediately you have to take. But if it is a time sensitive surgery, can be taken after one month, at least, I mean, if possible, best is after three months. And if time permits, at least six months. What is the recommendation for patient taking <laughs> dual antiplatelet therapy after PCI, percutaneous intervention with balloon angioplasty? So, if simple balloon angioplasty, not a stenting has not been done. What is the recommendation for how long we should wait for the patient taking the dual antiplatelet therapy? So, dual antiplatelet therapy, if the surgery is 14 days is what is required, 2 weeks. And if the surgery is more urgent, then at least 48 hours. So, simple, we need to remember all these things. If patient has a drug eluting stent or a bare metal stent, patient would be on dual antiplatelet therapy, right? Patient would be on dual antiplatelet therapy. If the surgery is emergency, you can't do anything. You have to take the patient for surgery. But if the patient surgery is elective, right? And we have full time then we need a gap of six months before we stop any of these drugs. If it is time sensitive, time sensitive surgery, then at least one month gap, at least one month, right? Or three months best, this would be best, this would be best if possible for the time sensitive one, okay? Low risk surgery with no risk of bleeding, continue dual antiplatelet. Therapy. These are the recent recommendations. Okay. Now, <clears throat> next question the examiner can ask What are the recommendations for stopping antiplatelets? So, for clopidogrel, 5 days before surgery, prasugrel, 7 days before surgery, tigagrel, 3 to 5 days before surgery. This is the recommendations. Then, now coming on the surgery, examiner will ask So, your patient, what would monitors will you attach? So, my patient had a PTCA done with a drug eluting stent is stable after PTCA. The duration was 1.5 years back, the surgery was done. So, I stopped the clopidogrel as I wrote in the pre-op orders already that stop clopidogrel. So, I have stopped the clopidogrel of my patient, right? So, I have stopped the clopidogrel and rest of the medication I am continuing, right? Rest of the medication, so we have stopped